This week on One Crazy Story, Detroit radio legend Ken Calvert joins us to talk about his career, his love for comedy, and much more. This yeah. is the heyday of yeah, radio, oh, right? Yeah, we were rock stars in our own right. 79, yeah. 1979. Oh, yeah. And I'd already forged a relationship with a couple of bands through Columbia Records, like sure. Journey. Oh, yeah, so you're crossing paths so with these people. So I already knew Journey, so when Journey came through town, I got hooked up once again you got with, the treatment. with those guys, and yeah. we've always been really good friends. Uh-huh. So um, it was just, you know, somebody wrote me something the other day on Twitter, didn't you work at WRIF? And I said, uh, happiest days of my life. Yeah. And they were. Hello and welcome to another edition of One Crazy Story. I'm your host, Nate Armbruster, and this week I'm talking with Detroit radio legend Ken Calvert. If you don't know Ken Calvert, you'll definitely know his voice. I met Ken about a few months ago when he was looking for someone to help him start his latest project, The Ken Calvert Show, which is uh, available on iTunes and all the podcast platforms. Ken's doing a great podcast right now. Um, It's all interviews. He's a great interviewer. Um, He interviews the likes of Tim Allen, um, and he's also sharing old interviews from throughout his career with everybody from Milton Berle to Adam Sandler to even Robert Goulet. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, the guys talk to everyone, and you can hear all these over at thekencalvershow.com. Subscribe to his podcast so you don't miss one. They're great interviews. I know you'll love them on this show, so make sure you go over to thekencalvershow.com. Check out what he's up to. Ken was kind enough to sit down with me for about an hour and uh, we talked about everything, just a bunch of stuff and um, uh, his whole career and, and how comedy's influenced his career in radio and just his life in general. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes. If you haven't leave a review, that'd be great. Uh, Subscribe on any app you use to listen to podcasts. It only helps the show. Also, if you want to get in touch with me, you can always follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Everything is Nate Comedy or One Crazy Story. And let me know what you think of the show. If you want to get in touch with me directly, just send an email to onecrazystory at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. So enjoy this week's show with myself and Detroit radio legend Ken Calvert. I'm I'm born and raised here in Detroit, Michigan, Mm -hmm. back in 1951. Did you ever leave? Yeah. Like, did you yeah. move away? Left a couple of times. Went to uh, uh, a radio station in San Jose. That was when I was really young. I was about 23, 24. And um, I had worked about a year and a half at W4 in Detroit, mm-hmm. which is down on East Jefferson, 2930 East Jefferson. Great, great cast of characters there. Karen Savelli. I worked there along with a guy by the name of, well, Howard Stern worked there at one point. <laughs> wow. Um, Mark McEwen worked there, who went on to do the weather on the CBS Morning Show. Very successful guy. Um, but at that time, we were young. They weren't paying us anything. Mm-hmm. And um, so I decided, well, the cool thing to do is you got to go to California, man. you got to go to California. Right. So I went out to California. had a couple of friends out in Northern California. So I went out there hoping to work my way down to L.A., and I ended up getting a gig at a radio station in San Jose, K-O-M-E, Come Radio. <laughs> Can't make that up. <laughs> Told my dad I was working at K-O-M-E, Comb Radio. Right. How would you say that on air? <laughs> no, you, you oh, man, they had some radio? ridiculous ways of... Uh, uh, these positioning statements, like you know, you've got come on your dial. And, <laughs> I mean, really, you know, well, even the how... seasoned veterans kind of went, "Oh, that's creepy, man." Um, they knew how weird that sounded, right? <laughs> the guys yeah, in but, charge, yeah, but they, you know, to this day they're still around. Hilarious, they're still around, man. yeah. And uh, well, they're probably legendary if they've been around that long. Um, well, at least locally, you absolutely. know, they're like, and they were really. I mean, it was a, a totally different landscape musically and otherwise. Um, but they were all like real grateful. It was a big Grateful Dead radio station, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you better really know what you were doing and and have. You gotta know you're what you're talking about. Yeah, you really sort of had to have some California DNA, which I did not. Mm-hmm. But I tried to um, figure it out as quickly as I could, and actually, I got along pretty well with the staff. But they were already their own exclusive club. Yeah, you know, you're, just was, of, you're this yeah, Midwestern guy. <laughs> I was the brown shoes on the black tux. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So I eventually, and like most people do, I wanted to come home, so I yeah. came back home. So I went from W4 to KOME, back to WABX, 
And then from WABX, I went to... I went to WRIF. Oh, I no, no, oh, I wow. take that back. I'll shorten the uh, story, hopefully, by just a little bit. I went to CBS. I worked for Columbia Records. Oh, okay. I was a promotion man, and I did A&R, where I got assigned to and traveled with a band. And that was cool. That had to have been a fun experience. Yeah, Look. that was really cool. I worked with Springsteen on the Darkness Tour. Man. Yeah, and I worked. But then, you know, we had we had a really interesting collection on Columbia. It was everything from, like, uh, Lou Rawls to to Barbra Streisand to Billy Joel to Ted Nugent to Aerosmith to um, Bruce, Sting, uh, Bruce Springsteen, and on and on and on. So did that for about two and a half years. And I got to tell you, honestly, there was a lot of action that went with that job. <laughs> I bet. Man, yeah, you're always on the run with that. You were on the run. On you were the on run. a lot of airplanes. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, I think that the... Hmm, I think I knew I had to go back to radios when I worked with Ron Wood and the New Barbarians, sort of an offshoot of the Rolling Stones when the Stones just sort of were dormant for a while. Mm -hmm. And Keith and Ron Wood uh, put this band together. The bass player was Zigaboo. Bobby Keys, who plays saxophone with the Rolling Stones, was part of the group. They had one album. It was really, really good. And I went on the road with them, and they were based out of Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, the Playboy Club there. They were using the Rolling Stones plane, which I never got to fly on. But Shoot. They, uh, they sure needed a lot of things to keep them up. <laughs> uh, more, so, so morning, noon, and night. And, yeah, uh, so you're essentially in a management position in, in a, in I was a ba- sense. Yeah, as a babysitter, it was daycare center Ken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, hey, yeah, Ronnie, Keith, it's time to get up. <laughs> you may want to put some pants on, Keith. Oh, my God. How yeah. do you tell a rock star... Like, how do you tell them what to do? Because yeah, I feel like they're like they're so now. privileged. What do we they do? Their, we did, uh, you don't know. Uh, you uh, know who I am? Yeah. Like, well, I do work for you. <laughs> He's a good guy. <laughs> He's right. We're going to Chicago tonight, man. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, I decided right away. I better get back home. Came back and settled in. Settled in real, real nice at WRIS. Was your ultimate goal to always be on air? Yeah. 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 Since I was in third grade. Yeah. Third grade, yeah. I mean, my dad worked for AC Spark Plug and he used to bring home tchotchkes, um, little transistor radios, and these, you know, little things like mm-hmm. that. So I started listening to night radio. You know what I mean? I would just be, as a kid, laying in bed and radio would come in from all over the country. And I just found it fascinating. And uh, then I started listening to, uh, you know, I mean, kind of rock radio, you know, the Lee Allen. And the Joel Sebastians, the Robin Seymours, when, you know, the top 40 jocks were really, really powerful dudes. Mm -hmm. And then it uh, segued into uh, underground radio, and that's where I really locked in. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And um, a lot of people said, well, you got a pretty good voice. You got your dad's pipes, you know. And I said, yeah, yeah, I sure do. And so um, I just, I, I, boy, did I fight against all odds to do it, though. Uh huh. Yeah, I really did. I feel like with most successful radio people, the ones I've met, it, it's always been like ever since I was a kid that I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, I did though. It was just um, I don't, I don't know how it happened. Um, even my dad in church, I remember my dad would like he'd do announcements or something, and people were like, "Boy, is your dad got a great voice?" And I was, yeah, and I was intrigued by that. I guess the microphone. Mm-hmm. And then I remember a couple of times he had little tchotchkes, were these little tape recorders, and that's when I was like, "Oh, oh now yeah. I'm having some fun." Right, you can record this stuff. Yeah, and they had the little variac button on it where you could speed your voice up and <laughs> slow it down. And I had a riot with the thing, and. Um, so my dad said, hey, if you're going to take this seriously, you know, you've got to, like, what you ought to do is take a newspaper and do, like, a little news broadcast and make sure that you get your cadence right. down and all that. So, and I'd, that's the thing is you, yeah. can just pra- you can just pretend you're on the radio. You don't really have to get to practice at it. Well, and but I just at least wanted to kind of sound like the guys mm-hmm. that were doing it. That next logical step, I guess, was I, I got a couple of interviews in high school. I decided that I would be a feature writer for the Brother Rice Chieftain, <laughs> and uh, I got an interview with Dick Purton. No way. Yeah, and I went over to WXYZ AM at the time, uh-huh. and uh, he was doing two shifts. Imagine this. He did mornings, and he did afternoons. It's a yeah. long day. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, so I went over, great guy. What a fabulous guy. 
and I interviewed him, and uh, he said, do it. I mean, he just encouraged the heck out of me to do it. I ended up going to um, high school. was kind of a rough road for me, but uh, I, I, was, I hosted a couple of dances as, oh, as that, a DJ. They, yeah, <laughs> that was like my way of kind of getting it done. And those did really well, and that yeah. made the school a little muddy, and they really liked That's that. That's awesome. Yeah, Ken, keep it up. We kind of like the theme that you've got going here. That's great. And then finally with that, I went to Aquinas College, and they had a really good radio station up there. By day, it was a classical radio station. At night, it was kind of underground fm Flipping format. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. And I tried out for the radio station, and the guy that was running it said, Hey, man, do the industry a favor. I said, yeah, what's that? He goes, never get into it. Never get into it? What a yeah. bastard. Right. I thought, what an awful really? thing to say to somebody. So about, <laughs> about 10 years later, I thought, boy, I want to look this guy up and compare paychecks. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know? How you doing, Brad? What are you... <laughs> yeah. What are you making a year? Right. What? Yeah. How's your How's your career going? Yeah. You know, everything cool up there at that little radio station. <laughs> yeah, you still come flipping on, for me? Yeah, come on down and see the one I work for. Right. But um, so then I started uh, at WRAF, and that's when. Yeah. Right. I mean, Rip, the Rip's everything. such a legendary station in still Detroit. Still is. Yeah. It's yeah still it's is. still huge, and uh, so we to um, get on those airwaves for you. I mean, that's that like, was huge. That's yeah, that's it a was really gigantic. big deal. Yeah, and I did middays. I did middays for uh, boy a long time, mm-hmm. and that was the best shift ever. Mm-hmm. Didn't have to get up. You could sleep and in. Still had my afternoons. <laughs> yeah, take a little power nap and go out and rock it at night. And then come in and see the morning crew, JJ, and the morning crew just going, oh, we're dying. <laughs> Exhausted. We can't do this. You guys go to the same show, and then they have to get up yeah, seven we'd all hours have to, earlier than you? Yeah, we'd have to see something at Jaggers or one of those places. Uh-huh. And we, you know, once again, we all knew how to party. <laughs> yeah. We all knew well, how I mean, to what, party. Now, what year did you start at the Rift? Because, I mean, this was back. I mean, these were this was the day to be on the radio. This is yeah. the heyday of yeah, radio, oh, right? Yeah, we were rock stars in our own right. 79, yeah. 1979. Oh, yeah. And I'd already forged a relationship with a couple of bands through Columbia Records, like sure. Journey. Oh, yeah, so you're crossing paths so with these people. So I knew Journey, so when Journey came through town, I got hooked up once again you got with, the treatment. with those guys, and yeah. we've always been really good friends. Uh-huh. So um, it was just, you know, somebody wrote me something the other day on Twitter, didn't you work at WRIF? And I said, uh, happiest days of my life. Yeah. And they were. Absolutely the greatest time I ever had, so... Um, how long were we at the Riff? I was at Riff for, let's see, 79 through 91. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, you know, you pretty much become a local, I mean, everybody knows. Well, that you, I, you're one of the one of the media personalities in town. I'm you truly know what I mean? one, you, yeah, Nate, I'm truly one of the pillars. I'm one of the, uh, I, one of the real true icons. I would say so. Well, I mean, to some extent, I... I mean, have, this is my perspective, have, too. You have to I have mean, a bit of an ego, which I don't think I ever had uh, much of, but... Um, I think I I managed to do pretty well, and um, I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or anything just like Arthur nature, Penhallow, but uh, just by nature of you being on the air for 20 years, you just people you know would recognize the name. Oh you know? yeah, you know, yeah. But, um, and I was lucky. Most people were were and have been always really nice to me, mm-hmm. you know. But I wasn't. I never was into the um, two things I never got into was uh, shocking, um, and I never was. Never found a real need to be politically, uh, yeah, or should I say, politically, you know, active yeah. on one side or the other. Because I decided, if you go there, you're going to divide your room, man. And I don't right. want. I'd rather have the full hundred percent. And there's plenty of those voices out there. It's like you know, yeah. I mean, oh, if you go man. find if you if you like one side, go. You can find it if you like the other. You know, you can you can find that stuff. What? Where's the middle? You know, can I just be entertained for a little bit. And you know, that's what I was at WRIF. I was in the middle between two uh, then really powerful and still iconic uh, 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 radio programmers uh, in that JJ Jim Johnson and Arthur Penhollow. Mm-hmm. And um, Arthur P. Oh yeah. yeah, that lineup from six a to six p.m. was just killer. Mm-hmm. We killed it. Uh, we owned it. I'd love to hear uh, some tapes of these. Oh, it was yeah. some good stuff. And you know, you bring up a good point because you said the word tape, and that's just it. Mm-hmm. Poof, where did mm-hmm. they go? Mm-hmm. They're we somewhere. Did, we didn't save this stuff. Well, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. You didn't always roll tape during every interview. And had you thought now today, of course you do. Yeah. 
you know what I mean? Record but, everything, um, especially since you're not you're not actually t- you know it's all all the memory you need. Yeah, I rem- I remember if like um, boy, I mean, so many people came through there that, like I said, poof, it's mm-hmm. out there in space. When I think about Billy Squire, I think about uh, b- Police, I think about Queen, I think about um, oh man, uh, there are so many. Never ends. At uh, occasionally, the production director would come down and go. Um, uh, the, the the program director wants me to roll a cassette on this. Is 45 minutes going to be enough? And I'd go, oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> and it would be on cassette, and they would save it. I have no idea where it is. Oh, man. No idea at all. But luckily, then we did get into um, DATS. Yeah and, di- yeah. and then eventually... Digital and everything. And then once it went digital... The game. Once it went digital, you just turned to your right and started, <laughs> you know, um, well, the digital audio. Well, yeah, when I record these, I have like I have like 10 hours on a memory card. <laughs> sure. I, I don't think we need all 10 hours. No, I know. You know what I mean? Well, with me... Well, I mean, well, with, with you, me, no, I, to, that'd you know, be great. But 10 I just and a half, mean, 11 hours. <laughs> yeah. But that's just, you know, and that's just like an 8 gig card. It's like crazy how you can just... You could fill, you know, you could record anything you want. You don't have but, to. But you know, the the thing is, is that it does. I, you know, it keeps me awake at night when I think about where is that interview. You know, I'll mm-hmm. see a picture. I'll see the picture of the interview that I did. Mm-hmm. And it would be so much cooler to be able to say, "And here's the interview that goes with that picture." That would be great. You know. Yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing is, is that I did find a whole box of dats. Oh yeah. yeah. WJR dats because I worked at WJR, and that was an interesting ride, but. Um, but I did, uh, but I found these things and I'm repurposing them now, cleaning yeah. them up. And the audio is fantastic. But that's made me just insane in terms of being reflective and retrospectively looking back at the stuff right. that yeah. I'll never find again. And it le- yeah, and it leads to like, because I mean, your whole career, I mean, how many interviews have you had? And you're like, there's so many that weren't recorded. And I'm finding all these, everything from what, Milton Berle to Adam Sandler. Oh, yeah, to, yeah. You know. And not to mention, I mean, then there's some other ones like, um, oh, God, I mean... Um, Robert Goulet. How many rock jocks have interviews with Robert Goulet? So specific. And you're like, what was he promoting? He was in. Um, see, the Fisher Theater was downstairs at the Fisher Building, so a lot of these people that were in these these full scale productions would come up to the studio. Oh yeah, and you'd be sitting there with uh, with <laughs> with Robert Goulet. <laughs> you know, and I'd go, "Oh, my dad would be so proud." That's hilarious. Kenny, get me an autograph, William. I'm a big fan of Bobby, Bobby Goulet. <laughs> um, Bobby Collins used to come through town a lot, and he would sit in a lot, and boy, was could he take over a studio. Do you remember the comedian Bobby Collins? Yeah, oh yeah. And um, big Vegas, sort of a Catskills comic. And uh, so those were interesting days at WJR, but I, luckily I did find a lot of my stuff because mm-hmm. I had a great producer, a guy by the name of Kevin Collard, who really got me and understand that what we should be looking for in terms of guests mm-hmm. were comedy and rock and roll. I feel like those are the two best. They are the best. And you know the other thing is, the one thing that I did in mornings, because I did mornings a few different times at uh, two different radio stations, WRAF when JJ and uh, the morning crew left to go to WLLZ, and I also did mornings specifically at WLLZ, after they left to go to WCSX, mm-hmm. where I eventually <laughs> went. Jeez, yeah, it yeah, never just, ends. Just bouncing around. Radio is a curious yeah, beast. Same building. And uh, but when I did mornings, the one thing that I I didn't really know where to lean, so I was a huge fan of the Comedy Castle. Yeah, gigantic, and I would go at least once a week. Mm-hmm. And usually, if it was a comic I liked, I'd go all three days: Thursday, right. Friday, even the Saturday. Ones you, even the ones you don't like, they're probably still pretty good. You know, that's oh, the thing. absolutely. Like, and a lot of my buddies were at that time doing sometimes just emceeing, opening, and then a lot of them uh, were doing the middle. Yeah, you know, when they were starting to. I'm, I'm talking about Tim Allen and Dave Coulier, mm-hmm. Mike Binder. Um, especially those three guys. Yeah, they were, and I was, and I ran with those guys. So totally. we would just go up there and, uh, you know, do the cocktail thing, have some serious laughs, and they'd go up and break in some new stuff. And nothing and, like hanging out at the comedy club with comedians, especially those guys. And, yeah, and that what in the and what, watching was it, the, 80s, the 90s? progression, mm-hmm. watching their acts really get solid. And I just remember being with them so many different times. And then that whole thing came down, and that don't let me forget to ask you a, 
a question or to make a point about comedy. Okay. Okay. So very quickly about these guys, I saw the acts developing. I saw this so this whole home improvement thing happening right up the right. street at Tim's house. He exploded. You know. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And I remember being there was a comedian, an opener, in the middle guy name of uh, Jim McClain. And I oh, don't I know, know Jim. I don't know if uh, McClain's doing it anymore. I don't. Yeah, I, I know him. I still know Very him. Very yeah, funny yeah. guy, but his, yeah. his real job is a carpenter. Yeah. He's a really good construction carpenter, yeah. finished carpenter and all that. And he was working at Tim's house, and I'll never forget, he put a deck on the back of Tim's house, and Tim and I came back, and uh, we were going to have a beer, and we come out, and the deck is coming right along, and, and, and Jim has put down the crossboards, the planks, so you can actually walk in the thing. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Tim was like, uh, Jim. And it was like, yeah, Tim, what's up? And he goes, where's my hose? And he goes, what hose? And he goes, the hose that was right here. And McLean had built the deck over okay. the faucet and the hose. We looked through. He lifted up one of the boards, and there was the hose down there. And it was like... So we just had some laughs. It was easy, easily, <laughs> good easy, easily fixed. And Tim's was like, I'll be selling this place in a month. But anyway. that's where that whole thing started <laughs> to come together in Tim's head. You know, were just things that happen on a construction site. And he always had guys in his house. The more money he started to make, he would have improvements, home improvements home done improvement. to his I house. Mean, yeah, the guy. I mean, yeah, that's, what, that's where, what he was yeah. into. And so he and he really got into that. That's where that whole that's... Bosch pneumatic. You know doing the dishes around the house and that stuff's never going to come out i better get my bosch pneumatic sander <laughs> it just came out of his just real watch life him, yeah they'd wa- i'd watch him develop this stuff and coulier and the voices mm-hmm. you know and then eventually mm-hmm. now obviously you know huge doing voices and did a lot of those um uh i mean did a lot of them well, he did stuff a lot of voice work before the full house fame Absolutely. Like he was already working pretty consistently. And now he's back huge on the college circuit because that whole Fuller House thing and the Mm -hmm. kids that grew up in front of television sets, Nickelodeon. Yeah. Nickelodeon. And now their kids are watching it. Yeah. 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 So we ran together as a group. So the the combination, the marriage of comedy and rock and roll and rock and roll radio because radio was paramount to comedians to uh, get the word out that they were performing. So Mark's brother, Mike Ridley, was a regular in the morning show. He would come in sometimes once, twice a week, mm-hmm. and uh, had some great funny songs. And so, but that's when I'm talking about Seinfeld, Shandling, everyone. I'm talking about Kathleen Madigan, obviously ah, to this day. But so I, great. I mean, so, Tommy Chong, Cheech and Chong um, would come in, and that was when radio was not so goddamn restrictive. Yeah, and you could have them on for three hours, basically co-hosting the show with you. Or at least an hour, but that's mm-hmm. when you got down to other radio stations then starting to want to have the comic as well, especially as they got big. Richard Jenny was another one that was a regular. Oh, he's the best, man. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so that was just a huge yeah. part. So comedy is part of my DNA. So comedy was part of the DNA comedy yeah. you know, uh, overall format that really, really worked for morning radio for me. It really does. I think, yeah. it, and, you know, and it, it bums me out that, that now it's just so uh, uh, exclusive well, it's unless just... you're un- unless you're paying for the airtime. It's like well, we're, unless we're unless the comedy cancel sponsors the morning show, we're not going to let you and the difference promote between, the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the difference now is the fact that radio. If you do have a good enough act to go on radio, if it's terrestrial radio, you've only got six minutes max. Right. Maybe if you get six. Right. What you may have to do is go in after the show gets off the air, do your full twenty minutes or so, and mm-hmm. then what they do is they take three or four one-minute segments. Mm -hmm. And once again, getting back to Nate Armbruster, told us a really funny story about his first uh, uh, episode trying to make Kool-Aids for the cousins. (laughs) You know what I mean? And... uh, and then so, you just cut yeah, right to it. It just doesn't work, man. Mm-hmm. Not here well, yeah, does, at that point, you might as well just do a podcast, you know? Exactly. exactly. And you forget now when you hear podcasts that, wow, they were allowed to expand and open it up. Yeah, and that's why podcasts are doing so well now. Mm-hmm. That's why they're doing so well. But that was a great combination. Now I had a question for you. Yes. Because I remember back in the day, remember there was a comedian by the name of Bruce Baum. Oh, I know Bruce Baum. I don't know him, but I know who he is. People used to bash him a little bit because they called him a prop. 
comic. I remember the comics were always really, I have, really bitter and would pound on the prop comics. I ha- yeah. They all hated Carrot Top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on a yacht right now. And guy, exactly. <laughs> That's the, yeah, I, I yeah. have nothing bad to say about that. <laughs> Whatever. Good for you. And, you figured it out. You figured it out. I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> and guys would, guys would say, if you just said the name, is like, do you know uh, uh, Bobby Donnell? He's a prop comic, I think. Oh, okay, never mind. Dude, I yeah. have I have a box set of all these old evening at the improvs, uh-huh. and uh, Bruce Baum was on this. I, you know, and these are people. I bought this when I was first starting com. I, yeah. When I was really getting interested uh-huh. in comedy, you know, and I'm like, oh, all these old sets like from the '80s, you know, of all these people who now are just everybody from Seinfeld to Bruce Baum, where it's like. I mean, Bruce Baum, super funny guy. I mean, he he's crushed it. Really he had a great set. Guy. And I'm like, this guy's hilarious. And he, well, I wonder what he's doing now, you know? I think he's still trying to sue Seinfeld <laughs> over the, the what, uh, one, uh, what was it, one something nut. Letters from a nut. Letters from a nut. Did you ever see Letters from a nut? No. It was... Uh, it was a movie? No, it's a, a book. book. It was a book? series of books. Oh, letters yeah, from letters. A nut. <laughs> letters. Letters from a nut. Should and be a book. it was... Uh, supposedly, it was a, the ghost author was Bruce Baum. You may want to look this up. And there was a okay. There was a lawsuit. Interesting. Well, yeah, and but it was um, they were he would they would write Mars candy bars. I see. And, so with an idea for a new candy bar. Someone didn't get their payday. And it was called yeah, nicely played. <laughs> see what see what you see what you did there. <laughs> Thank you. Check that out though. Letters from a nut. Okay. Were, and it's hysterical. Okay. It's a great. If you read it on an airplane, you're going to really bother the people sitting next to you, but it's a great book. <laughs> but that's what Baum, unfortunately, was forced to do because he became bitter and a lot of people were complaining. Mm-hmm. So now I'll shut up and, and ask you this question. Staying with comedy, I am convinced, and Bruce Baum comes back into this equation, I once said something on the air, and I said, well, I, technically, because guys were talking about boobs, I said, if you put an S on anything, Bruce... It can be a set of boobs. It can be a woman's breasts. <laughs> you know, he was like, what do you mean? I said, well, if you just said, and I looked around the room and I saw a coffee maker, and I said, what a set of coffee makers <laughs> on her, man. And and then we just That's started, hilarious. Yeah, and everybody just, if you put an S on anything. Yeah, that's hilarious. You know, there's a couple of coffee cups up there, baby. <laughs> Look you know, and so he said, so he, he goes in and he gets takes out a twenty dollar bill, and he said, um, twenty uh, twenty bucks. I want to buy the joke off you. I said, done. I said, yeah, right. <laughs> so I said, sure. like I'm not a comic. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll take the, I'll take the twenty, and develop it or whatever. But here's my question for you: Isn't it really totally possible that more than one comic? could come up with the same idea oh absolutely yeah. i think everything's been done by this at this point you yeah know? I mean, so every- aren't all comics then technically thieves <laughs> in a, uh, yeah in a way i mean you know sometimes you see straight up like oh wow you stole the actual word for word yeah and i'm like you know you didn't even try to yeah you know and a lot of times man like there's been times where i've done a joke like i did a joke once and i remember someone came up to me after someone i knew and they were like hey just so you know i saw someone uh you know and they'll like tell me who they saw and where they saw it on tv and i'm like do it like and i don't know if i saw it and like maybe subconsciously it came out the way it did but i'm like oh i better just stop doing it i mean that's the thing is like it's i think it's some of it's just parallel thinking you know or if like maybe the joke's just that easy well, because I, I think perspective is what makes it original. You know, everybody has a dog joke. Well, <laughs> or like you know what I mean. Or everybody you know has a, a the same topics of just. I mean, everything's been done. Yeah, you I know? mean, it, well, obviously the automobile, right? Uh, your first apartment, right? You know, and uh, uh, dating. Dating is big, naturally. Mm-hmm. Okay, your parents, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of that stuff. All of a sudden, you you have to question yourself. Did I think about that? Or right. did I hear that? Right. You know? you know, and that's a big. Fe- you know, I, mean, I mean, it's a fear of mine where I'm like, I'd hate to get off stage and then accident. You know, because I mean, if I hang out in the back of the comedy club enough, and you see enough comedians, even local guys, where it's like, you you might not even realize. That, and I feel like most in most cases, it's not intentionally done. You know. Yeah, but you know, there, there's a couple of things I was going to bring up to you at the same time. If you don't mind me going there quickly, I don't sure. know how much time you yeah. have. I have all you, day. You, you can cut it out. But I have all day. The one thing that is I found painful is like, especially an opener who's just getting started. 
Mm-hmm. There's nothing worse than a really bad act, and there's mm-hmm. nothing worse than feeling hopelessly uncomfortable for that person. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that bad. transmission from bad into audience and just like going, yeah. instead yeah. of getting, you know, the guy that yells out, you're not funny, mm-hmm. you know. I it's don't. like everybody feels bad. Yeah, everybody yeah. feels bad. But That's rough to watch sometimes. Sometimes it's like, it, it feel, it's, it's comforting to know. I'm like, oh, I'm out of that stage, yeah. you know. I'm yeah. at least comfortable up there. So, like, yeah. I can I can take, like, a new idea and just throw it out there. And if it sucks, it sucks. And we'll, we'll all keep moving, you know. You, you learn how to navigate those situations the more I, you do it. I and, remember a lot of times people would say because of the fact that I did the Detroit Pistons as the announcer and all that, that a lot of people would say, well, you know, you're doing radio and you do the Pistons. Uh, a lot of people know your name. Will you MC our event? Right. And you go, sure, yeah, yeah. It's not a bad gig, right? No, it's not a bad it's gig. It's a great gig. No, it's not a good gig. But you got to be there from start to finish. Ugh, yeah, that, that You know, you got to say goodnight, ladies Especially and gentlemen. Especially if it's a, an event yeah. that sucks. Yeah, and as people get incrementally higher and higher, <laughs> well, you have to re- remain <laughs> yeah. perfect. Well, not perfectly, right. but somewhat well, gotta, sober. You kind of watch the room get a little bit away you from gotta you. you got to be in control of the situation. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, I remember they'd always say, Look, just get up there and do, you know, uh, 10 minutes or so and then bring up the uh, the guest. And I go, you know, the speaker. And I mm-hmm. go, get up there and do 10 minutes. <laughs> I said, if I could get up there and do a solid 10 minutes, <laughs> I wouldn't be here. I'd, I'd be, be at the good. Comedy Castle right, right, right now. Right. A solid 10 minutes. That's a lot of that's a lot of comedy. You don't realize how long ten minutes is. Yeah. So like when you first start, it's like okay, get get a get five minutes together, and then you know get really good at that five minutes, and then it's like okay, then then what? Now try ten minutes. Go for ten minutes, and that you know next thing you know, like at this point, it's hard to do. It's hard for me to do five minutes because I'm like I don't have enough time. <laughs> well, you know what? The, yeah. the first guy that's, that I, now it's hard again to do five minutes. It's the first in a whole different way. It's the, like I have too much to say. I didn't mean to step on you. That's okay. Um, but I was going to say, I was just looking at the picture. Um, I saw Jay Leno at the Premier Center many, many years ago. And he had black hair, and I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, and I've never seen a guy just so incredibly gracefully go from topic to topic, mm-hmm. topic to topic to topic, and did like one hour and mm-hmm. every bit of it. A lot of people don't think he's funny, I guess, with his stand-up, but I do. I think, well, I think modern, you know, most people nowadays hate him for whatever the they know. They know him at the end of the Tonight Show and right. all that stuff. And I don't know, as a stand-up comedian, the guy is one of the best. Absolutely, you know? there's no yeah. doubt about it. I saw him at um, Caesars in Windsor, yeah. like a few years ago. Like I don't know, maybe five years ago. He did two hours, just no, no opener. It was not, you know. And yeah, I, he did do a portion of like I th- you're just running some monologue jokes for next week, you know, <laughs> or oh, like yeah. you know, like yeah. you're just working out some stuff for the show. But I mean, he had actual he had act, you know you can tell the guy works, man. No, 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 he had chops. I guess and he was... doesn't and he doesn't need to do it. That's what's crazy about it is like the guy's such a psycho. He's like I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna tape the Tonight Show, fly to wherever Wisconsin, do a corporate, and then fly home, and then do the, wake up, do the show the next day, and it's like you crazy person. Yeah, before <laughs> he was he was hard, I mean he was hard in on the Tonight Show. He uh, literally did I think three hundred dates a year. Oh yeah, you know so uh, it's I, crazy. I, well, I'm not defending what I said about him. I just he was the first guy that I ever saw fill an hour and a half and not take a break. So good. Yeah, not even yeah. There was some dull. You know, uh, moments yeah. in it. I think it, but you've earned the. Still pretty, you've earned, you've earned pretty that ten seconds. Strong, yeah. Now I could see. I could be in an audience with Chris Rock for four hours and say more, more, mm-hmm. Me more. Too. Yeah. You know, we and, saw Seinfeld in. Uh, Seinfeld's incredible. In October, like just you know yeah. his last tour or whatever, and he did about two hours, and it. I don't think he took. Maybe he took one sip of water. Yeah. But he did it during like a huge applause break that he probably gets at the same moment. Every you could see how meticulous the act was and how he knew and i'm like dude my you know my show it's like i'm my head's all over the place i don't know how you do that and like so well you know i mean obviously the guy's been around for 50 yeah. years doing stand-up or whatever but well, it's, it's it blows my mind that someone can get that good at what they do how long know? have you been doing it 10 years have you yeah this summer will be 10 years yeah. and, and you make a decent living I'm broke, but yeah, you know, yeah. Well, my my I'm paying my bills. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm paying my bills and I'm in debt. You well, know? Like, well, welcome to the United yeah, States of America. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna be every job I've tried to get, like day job. It's like I'm making exactly what I'm making doing stand up. If I'm if I take this job, you know, and I'm like, what's mm-hmm. the point? I'd, yeah. ra- I'd rather like do something I love and Absolutely, be broke. Yeah. <laughs> if I have to be broke, I'm gonna at least keep doing stand up. <laughs> yeah. You know. 
I'm, be, <laughs> I'm going down laughing, folks. I know. Well, like, you might as well. You, my, I'll I mean, go down well, while you're laughing. What are you going to take away from me? You know, I've. <laughs> well, what's your feeling? I have on, nothing. What do you think about guys that do impressions? Uh, if they're good at it, I'm impressed. Yeah. But also, I don't know. I, sometimes they can be hacky. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Every, Everybody can do, uh, uh, you know, I think the most popular is... Uh, well, Trump's, every, Trump's pretty high uh, right now. Yeah, tr- everybody However, does Donald Trump. But also, I mean, it, as soon as I see a guy break out the Christopher Walken on stage, I'm uh, like, get out of here. I'm gonna, yeah. I gotta go to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, he used to do um, some of that, and but he was good at it. Oh, he, he still is. Oh, I forgot. I, I'll come back to it if I can remember. I was going to ask you if, you if you follow this like I do in terms of people doing impressions, specifically right now, Donald Trump. I think that people hear somebody who does a really good impersonation, like a Martin Short, or not a Martin Short, I should say, who's the, um, oh, uh, the guy that did uh, uh, George Bush Saturday Night Live. Oh, Will Ferrell. Not Will Ferrell, but I'm talking about... Wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be Oh, proven. Dana Carvey. Dana, Dana Carvey. Carvey. Yeah. I'm convinced that a lot of comedians that do impressions are doing impressions of Dana Carvey <laughs> yeah, doing he, the impression. He kind of set the standard for that character, you know. And I find that to be the case now with Trump. Yep. Everybody's Everybody, doing... I think, is doing Alec Baldwin's Trump. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. They, because nobody instinctively, I mean, everybody sort of picked up little things Uh but i think it's easier to impersonate the impersonator than it is the real person you're right do you think about that i I do all the time Mm -hmm. because he i mean alec baldwin's famous for his donald trump and and he's pretty good at it but you're all but then you look at everyone else doing it at least on camera it's it's you're doing the impression of it's the way it seems it's interesting you point that out i never really thought about that but everybody i've seen that i can think of i'm like yeah it does look like a I'm rip off of that Alec guys that do impersonations are impersonating the guy that does it the best and not the actual person they're impersonating that's a great point yeah right? we you know there you go that's See, a great you know, point that one for just a little bit yeah yeah bill Hader does a really great job I with love uh bill Hader. oh isn't he great yeah bill Hader does a really good job with uh uh, Keith Morrison from uh, mm-hmm. Dateline. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you know. Yeah. yeah. Do you want? Uh, uh, do you have HBO? You, I do. You, there's this great show. I'm obsessed with it right now. It's probably my current favorite TV show. It's called Barry. It's Bill Hader's show. Like it's a he's a he plays a hitman that wants to be an actor. Oh, okay. So like he's hired on this job and ends up stumbling into this acting class and like he's like this is what yeah. I want to do. It's really it's I'm probably paraphrasing it real bad, but I think it's a really good show. But think about it now. Springsteen had that song a long time ago, 20, 25 years ago, maybe 30. You know, 57 channels and there's nothing on. <sighs> yeah. His statement about cable TV. Yeah. 57 channels. God. There are 5,000 options. I read an article. No, there's got to be more than that. No, I read an article about, um, you know, I mean, most things are on demand streaming or like yeah. Netflix, Hulu now. There was like, there were more than 500 scripted television shows in production last year. And that's across all platforms, from Netflix to Amazon Prime, like their original series, all the way to your, you know, NBC sitcom. Do you, you know? know crazy. That's NBC. so much TV. Oh, I know. I have a question. I'm a, boy, I love doing this. And, you know, we're up to 41 minutes. I don't so you care. Can I love talking, it up anytime man. You want. I feel like I've... I apologize for doing all the talking That's okay. This. Is, is the show on NBC currently on NBC called Alex Inc.? Uh, I think it's ABC. Is it, or is it NBC? No, my, it's but ABC. It's, it's it doesn't matter. The, it's on... It's about the podcast. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. Zach Braff. It's horrible. Yeah, I don't like it. It's I, not it, it that you don't start a podcast and expect it. It's, it's a this. disservice to all of us that do podcasts. Absolutely. That's or somebody why, who wants to do That's one. why I hate it, because you do not go out and get yourself a little space in one of the millennial no. warehouses, you know if you will. You know how expensive that rent is? The guy... Quit your day job? The guy literally took his 401k to invest in a podcast? No. You don't... Mm-hmm. You need $2,000 to do have really good equipment mm-hmm. to do a podcast mm-hmm. you don't need a producer yeah it's, necessarily it's yeah you need a niche you have to have some feeling for the niche and as to why you're going in that niche have they ever made a good show about and actually uh portray what it's like to be in radio no or like on the air in some fashion so they get like, close uh, i thought fm was pretty close I've not, or new I've, or what was it not fm excuse me am radio no news radio or news radio Jeez. yeah with AM phil hartman yeah, yeah, yeah that was pretty close yeah because the program director really did sort of try and mold and tell people and do the, mm-hmm. the necessary restrictions 
you know, but it was a news format. That was pretty close. Mm-hmm. KRP wasn't even close. That was that was a funny show. It was though. a funny show, but, but just, it, I see every year at Thanksgiving that clip of the the turkey promotion. Yeah, as God is my witness, die. I swear that yeah. turkeys could fly. Or, right, you know, right. Which is Les just Nessman it's like said. it was just a ridiculous. The scenarios are so yeah. ridiculous that it's you know there's no way that could be really what it's like. But yeah. like that's what I feel about Alex Inc. Where I'm like this seems ridiculous. Yeah, like it's it doesn't really it's not it's just stupid. He's like gonna, the whole thing. Like I mean, and it's based on a true story. Well, uh, that's what I was going to tell you. NBC sorry. went in this search. No, no, no. You didn't interrupt me. I'm glad we're you know we're yeah. discussing this because I I can't stand it. I can't mm-hmm. stand it for more than that's just mm-hmm. me. But it's because I was angry going into it. Going no, that's not. You know, especially now doing podcasts, trying to explain to people mm-hmm. the popularity and what a podcast is, starting at the grassroots organic stage, if you will. Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden, here's this show on ABC called Alex Inc., who leaves everything, mm-hmm. leaves his career, mm-hmm. takes his 401k, invests in it, moves into this loft, mm-hmm. has a producer, a cousin, characters, thoughts, and ideas, and is doing it in bed with his wife sitting next to him. Right. You know, with this, like, microphone. That's yeah, you're, you're that's, killing us, people. Yeah, you're, you're ma- killing and us. And you're making it look real stupid. And, and that's and, and, where and, I really get pissed off at the directors and the producers for not saying no. Yeah, that's not a podcast. No, yeah, and you know, talk you, to Adam Carolla. You know, go to one of the titans, the pioneers. You can get do, Joe Rogan to be your con, your consultant. Yeah, yeah, you know? and you know, I, I think like that story is more interesting to me as the guy that was like. You know, like someone like Joe Rogan, where it's like, I'm just going to do what I love and then, yeah. or just do something I want to do and have fun with it. Where, you know, his early ones, he's just sitting on his couch. They're, you can go watch them. They're all on YouTube. He's, he's sitting on his couch and it's, you know, just a, not even a very pricey setup. He's got like two sure microphones. Yeah. Maybe, what, 90 bucks a piece, <laughs> you know, and then he just plugs them in. You know, that's all you need, really. I mean, you, you can spend as much money as you want. Well, Alex had to reconfigure his entire life. Midstream, yeah. and I'm just going. No, kind of like that. Could have yeah. done it anyway, man. You could have yeah. done it right from home in your office. You could have kept your job and done. All right, Ken, shut up. Quit grousing. This is what happens yeah, I, when you get I, old. I don't disagree this though. This is that's what the, happens when you get oh, older. Boy, I'm start. I feel like that, and I'm don't. I'm young. Don't even. That's, yes, you that's are. what I mean. Like I don't want to. go. I'm there. already there. <laughs> so many topics, such little time. I get mad about the One weirdest things. One crazy story, ladies and gentlemen, leads into what 55 so far. We've. Uh, I don't I, lo- I want people to know who Ken Calvert is though. At the same time, so. You know, I, I, He's a I private man. Like I, the find the more I do this, though, yeah. the more I, I find the people I talk to interesting, and I'm and the reason I had it as one crazy story, just we're talking about the one thing, and then I'm like, yeah, but there's more to you, more to you than this. So like, I, that's why I like to start with like more conversation about whatever, and also it gives you know it does give people an idea of what you're like, especially with your show. You well, know? yeah, I mean, um, in my case. Um, um, the the story that uh, that I have. Do you want to hear it now? Absolutely. Okay. Let's go Here, into here's it. Here's my yeah. one crazy I, story. I I I didn't really. Uh, I just kind of let. You, it was so funny yesterday when we were texting. I go, hey, I'll be by. Uh, you know, we'll we'll record or whatever tomorrow. And then uh, I go, you I go, just have a story in mind so I don't put you on the spot. And you go, uh, you go. I think I can handle it. And then I go, oh, that's right. I forgot who I'm talking to. <laughs> this guy's been on the radio. He's and like, then I know. fire back. I, uh, it's Ken Calvert. Yeah, and now here I am thinking, oh, Ken, that's funny. He's like, it's Ken Calvert, <laughs> you idiot. I'm Ken Calvert. And then and then you call me like, did you know you were talking no, to me? I <laughs> like you, you actually I thought, thought you had just smoked a big fatty. I <laughs> you, told you that. And that you actually, you actually in mid-sentence, was, mid-text, thought, who am I? Who, who am I texting right who now? Who am I texting? <laughs> I don't so remember, funny. man. I thought you were just like, yeah, no, I can do this. No. I know how to do the. I know how to do a podcast. I know how to talk on a microphone. I well, have. A, I can do this. <laughs> and I go, you're right. Sorry. Well, I. I <laughs> it was so funny. I I had something happen to me the other day that I thought was really really funny, and I told a buddy of mine uh, the story, and uh, he he thought it was he totally got it, which is is good. <laughs> That's good. Because most of the time, my <laughs> friends don't get my stories at all. But um, fairly boring existence. My wife works during the day and does uh, animal cancer. Um, uh, well, she has an animal cancer facility. Mm-hmm. And so I, when she comes home, I don't like to hear the stories about Dusty and Winston. And, oh, yeah. You know, and uh, Pagan and, hey, and it can Barney. Be a, it and can be a bummer. As long as it's a good story, I'm more than happy to hear about mm-hmm. it, okay? But I don't want to hear the sad stories. Um Anyway, so we're just, you know, moving. She doesn't usually get home till about 7 o'clock, and uh, so comes home, usually makes herself a cocktail. Long story short, we're just not paying attention. You go, 
uh, you know, watching WDIV, Bernie, then it goes into Lester Holt and NBC Nightly News, and then it goes into America's Game Wheel of Fortune. Mm-hmm. So I'm running around doing various different things, and my <laughs> wife just got back from a trip to Ireland, and she's traveling quite a bit, and uh, she's about to go out to L.A. in about two and a half weeks. Mm-hmm. And so, and I'm jealous of all of these right. trips that she goes on. you got to figure out how to tag along. Yeah, Put yeah. me in your luggage. So anyway, Wheel of Fortune's on in the background. It's America's Game, as you know, and... Pat and Vanna, nice people, they tell me. And uh, so they're playing this game and they're spinning this wheel. And um, uh, so, you know, uh, both Ann and I on occasion will look up and we'll, we'll, we'll solve the puzzle. Yeah, you start playing. So, yeah, so the way it goes is the fact that uh, I'm not really paying attention. Ann is running around the kitchen doing different things. And we're talking about this upcoming trip uh, to L.A. And uh, so I'm walking around and all of a sudden she goes, uh, um, uh, I need new luggage. And I didn't pay attention to it. And all of a sudden she goes, I need new luggage. Oh, man. And I said, you just bought new luggage. <laughs> and she said, what are you doing? Yeah. I said, Jesus Christ. I said, you just, I said, yeah. you can't just buy luggage every time you go on a trip. And yeah, she right. was like, she said, what? what? She said, will you look at the TV? And the puzzle was, I need new luggage. That's hilarious. And I just turned around and I looked up and went, oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh. (laughs) Never mind. But just the way she incrementally got. That is so funny. But it's just But she got more. Yeah. yeah, She she was like, I need new luggage. And I I was like, well, I'm not. And I was like. Yeah, right. While you were. What? And she said, I need new luggage. (laughs) And I went, what? (laughs) And then she was so frustrated. That is so funny. That she screamed it out, and I was like, but you have no. So yeah. that's my story. That's my one crazy that's story. That's great. No, uh, I have a million more, but I thought that was just. It that's just, just happened. too funny. It's, it's, it's just, just that, a great yeah. story, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think you could put that I in. I love when stuff like that. In yeah. Alex Sink. Maybe it would make the show funny. Right, right. You know? Yeah, well, when they make when they make a, a sitcom about my podcast. No, if I were to sit down, if I were to Tim, if I were Tim Allen, or if I were Nate Armbruster, or if I were Dave Coulier, or anybody sitting down, and if I were to tell that story to Jimmy Fallon or to Jimmy Kimmel. It's a great panel story. They would, they, that would be a great panel story, Absolutely. wouldn't it? Absolutely, yeah. That's so, all I need. That's why, that's why I should call this, panel stories. And then, <laughs> Just give me all the stuff that you didn't do on Conan. And then at which point the crowd you know, bursts out laughing uh-huh. and the signs are on, at which point you look into the camera and say, we'll, we'll, we'll be right back with Three Dog Night. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, but That's I think great. we've done rather nicely here, don't you? Yeah, man. I really do appreciate you doing this. It was, no. it was really awesome to sit down with you. Do, um, I, I know you're you're working on a few things now. I know you're uh, you're not on the uh, you're not on air as no, right I'm now. No, I'm not on but... the air. Nope. And uh, what I would love to do is uh, to get back into uh, some sort of a voiceover routine. Mm-hmm. Uh, deep voices have gone out, but now they're kind of back in. Mm-hmm. But, uh, the but voice... you can also work with your voice in different tones yeah, and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, so you still have... The... the one I was really close on, I guess I was second or third in line, was uh, the DTE. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Put yeah. the power in your hands. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, they Didn't said, uh, Ben Bailey get that? I think he did. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. He does a nice job, yeah, by the way. He is, yeah. He, he also I got, love that guy. He also got Beaumont Hospital. Wow. And so, but it's, it's like it's so funny how much he works here. Yet he's he's from he's like he lives in New York. But yeah, like, well, you know, it's so funny how it's funny how, how how he shows up in in the Metro Detroit area. Well, that, it's funny when he I, plays the castle. It's so funny. It's yeah. like I wonder if I wonder yeah. if people put it. Together. I don't know if he talks about it or not. But like I'm just you know it's a gig's a gig. But like I don't know if he's like <laughs> well it's you know, so easy locally. now. It's so easy now, and especially with all the celebrities taking yeah. the primo gigs. You know they did. I mean you know you look at uh, it's so easy. It started, I mean yeah. I mean. You, you know, when, you, when you're uh, you're already a billionaire and you're like, I need yeah, I need to work. That's what pisses like, me yeah, off. Yeah, and it's like, come on, man. <laughs> like, Although the Matthew on. McConaughey spot right now for Lincoln, because I used to yeah, be local Lincoln, yeah. you know, but now the one where he's just he's just talking mm-hmm. and it's just kind of, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, it's kind of like. And I think part of it's done because they know people are going to make fun of it, and that's how things got to go viral. Yeah, I think you, you may know? be right. Yeah, and they just they make them do that because let's put somebody who's already famous and yeah. make them put them in a weird situation. You know, make it weird. Let's have them walk then, out in some really noisy loafers. And now it's yeah, look at the pool and just fall in. <laughs> and now it's like now it's a topic of conversation that we're talking yeah. about it. You know, <laughs> uh, Jim Carrey did that great spoof on uh, McConaughey on Saturday Night <laughs> yeah, Live. Yeah, that was so fun. That was one that of the best so I think I've ever. 
ever seen in terms, great. in terms of a spoof. Um, but um, go so, ahead. Oh, I was gonna say though, but you have you've been doing oh. your pot. You've been doing a podcast, but I mean, with yeah. I mean, we talk right. about some I'm, guests. I'm doing two podcasts right now. I'm doing my own podcast, which is the Ken Calvert. Wait a minute, the Ken you, Calvert you, Show. You put it together for me, so yeah. uh, well, it's called the Ken the Calvert Ken Show. Calvert Show. The Ken Calvert Show available so on double, all, all it, yeah all platforms: platforms yeah. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Um, everything. Everything. I think we're soon to be finally up on iHeartRadio, yeah. unless you know something I don't. Everywhere you can find podcasts. Um, but we have uh, yeah, the Ken Calvert Show. And what I've been doing is taking real interviews, Tim Allen recently. And um, then I'm going uh, also, uh, I, you know, I, I interviewed the two guys from, uh, two guys that I used to work with at Riff years and years ago. Uh, Tom Dalton and Jim Edelman, who have oh, a show yeah, yeah. on public television called Under the Radar. Great show. It's a great yeah, show. I man. like it. It's a great show. So they're doing really well with that. Talking about guys finding in their niche, going, want to get out of the corporate office and do something else. So great. And everybody drives up north going, huh, Seashell City? <laughs> yeah. It, we're, we're landlocked here. Right, right. What the hell could a seashell <laughs> shop be doing up here? We have not been drinking. Yet. You yeah, can tell have, that, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, they've done a great thing, though. And they... So we do some live stuff, but we also do some um, some uh, what I call lost classics, mm-hmm. and those are the ones that I'm finding and I'm reprocessing and putting up there. So That's so uh, great. So you're going, you're you're uh, you're re-airing old interviews yeah, and and yeah. doing some new ones. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to do more new ones. Sure. And yeah. what I might do is re- he... reintroduce myself to uh, Ridley and the comics and. Uh, yeah, I think it's great that you're uh, sharing the older ones too, because you did the one you posted the one with Adam Sandler, and it's like you know, and like yeah. nine, like in like ninety seven, like that was like yeah, 97. I mean that was prime Adam Most Sandler. Most of the ones you know? that I That's... bring back from WJR, exactly that twenty to 21, 22 years yeah, old. Yeah, those are great. Those are great interviews. And they're so, fun, you know, and they still they're kind of timeless, you know. know you're just yeah. talking that you're talking to Adam Sandler just like about his life. Yeah, and just, it's just, just really put, cool. I just put one up from uh, cool stuff. Uh, Casey Kasem, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know if I put any George Carlin up there or not. There's a great one with Tommy Chong as mm-hmm. well. Pissed off the audience on WJR boy. Ooh, oh. <laughs> that one was a phone lighter. That <laughs> one got the people. That got the kids pissed off. Sure, boy. sure. Yeah, <laughs> the 66 plus crowd did not get Tommy that's Chong so funny. at all. That's great. And uh, <laughs> but that's what I'm doing at the Ken Calvert Show dot com. The Ken Calvert Show dot com. Um, trying to become more active with that. And then the other thing, which is 180 degrees from my own podcast is it's called the Father Joe Podcast Father Joe Grimaldi Brother Joe Grimaldi taught me at Brother Rice High School and he was one of the guys going back to the very early stages of my career sort of realized that I was not the brightest guy in class (laughs) and sort of directed me into other areas where he He thought I was You just saw where your strengths were Yeah, exactly So I was the Brother Rice mascot I was the warrior Mm -hmm. and sort of danced Mm -hmm. around and um uh, then I also, like I said, was the disc jockey, did announcements and all that sort of thing. So he sort of uh, helped me along the way and kept me on the straight and narrow, which was very important at the time. Now, with that said, he is now a retired priest and a fabulous guy. I was born and raised a Catholic. I uh, wouldn't call me a practicing Catholic by any stretch of the imagination, but I still remember the basic tenets, yeah, as, they as we call all it. do. Yeah, yeah, you're a yeah. Christmas Catholic, and, and Christers, <laughs> yes, Christmas and Easter, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so the premise was: what happens when a holy roller and a rock and roller get together? Well, listen and find out. So it's the Father Joe podcast, and that's uh, uh, www. The Father Joe Podcast, all spelt out, T-H-E-F-A-T-H-E-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's my sobriety test as well, <laughs> with a dot com. Uh, and uh, we're up to almost 40, 40 of these. Oh, now. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're... since you, uh, Nate Armbruster, was my tech support guy and hooked us up back in February. So we've You're been rolling up, now. I would say for three months. Yeah. yeah. March, April. That's great. Yeah, middle of February through the middle of May. So uh, it's really good. We're growing it. It's a slow grow, but it's getting there. That's good, We've got about 2,000 downloads altogether after three months, which for that limited of an audience. But I think yeah, we, we, no, can, we great, can expand man. it. But uh, it, what I'm trying to do is the right thing, the good thing. I'm trying to monetize it enough so that uh, a retired priest who obviously has no income beyond yeah. weddings and funerals, yeah, and people don't normally tip at funerals, if you know <laughs> what I mean. So I'm trying to help out 
a really solid human being, a guy that That's great, is man. just really, really a wonderful guy. So check it out, the Father Joe podcast and, of course, the Ken Calvert Show, both available uh, on all of those wonderful podcast awesome. apps that you have on your phone. Yeah. So, uh, Ken, thank you so much for doing Nate, this. Nate, it's a huge honor, man. I appreciate it. I look it. forward to hearing it. Don't distort my voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think the levels came out. We're using. Uh, can I say my equipment on this? Yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. Yeah, we're 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 in Ken's home studio. Yeah, this it's kind thing of a is mess beautiful. Right now. Oh, mess. Yeah. I don't know what to do with all these platinum records yeah, gifted yeah, to me by Bruce is, Springsteen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do. That's like, the show. I produced that show live from the Agora. Look at that. Jeez. Yeah. That's amazing. Going back to nineteen, uh, we we're, did. We did a launch party for that uh, for Darkness on the Edge of Town. I produced it. I put it all together. We were live on seven different radio stations, and we did it live from the Agora wow. in Cleveland, Ohio, and hosted by WMMS. Oh, my God. That's unbelievable, man. It's so old. If you look at it closely, Nate, it's been autographed, and you can barely see it anymore. Because if you could see it yeah, really, see if it. you could see it really well, it would be on eBay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so that's just some. That's of That's amazing, stuff. dude. Yeah, so yeah. cool. And a lot of it in the basement still. So my wife won't uh, let me put it anywhere. Oh, else there's but more in here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But that's uh, cool though. You need the you need to hang some of this stuff. Some of the stuff it's got to be on your wall, dude. Sure, it has to be. Yeah. yeah. That you with uh, Paul McCartney. Yeah. <laughs> just, just yeah. yeah. No big deal. Interview. No, that was Paul, Paul McCartney, McCartney and. Um, that was a thank you note from Yoko Ono, who I interviewed about wow. uh, a month after John was assassinated. You and got- she granted me the one interview that uh, ran on ABC throughout the country. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I don't know how I got it, but I did. Yeah, how does that? Uh, it came down somehow through ABC. Jeez. Somebody knew her well enough to say, if you're going to do it, there's a guy in Detroit. So I'll no, forever no thank kidding. that person. I don't know. And then above that is a picture, by the way, that a buddy of mine took of the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. Mm-hmm. He took that with his black and white brownie camera mm-hmm. and took that picture, and I absolutely love it. It's Paul and George mm-hmm. singing I Want to Hold Your Hand. So great. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's Isn't amazing that cool? stuff, man. And it was exactly, boy, it was, it was uh, I forget the year now, 1964, 10 years ago today, that the Beatles completed their 14-week run at number one. 14 weeks of the Beatles having <laughs> the number one record in the country. It's not yeah. bad. No. It's not bad at all. So uh, Amazing. No, it's uh, it's all these, if these walls could talk. No kidding. Between sports and rock and roll, man, I've done it all. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. I had a good time. Thank Appreciate you, Nate. It.